Hi and welcome to the book club. It's a new year and it's time to look at the most exciting non-fiction releases for January 2024. Uh, I expected it to be a quite a slow month uh, because January is slow for me. But when looking through the release schedule, I realized that this is this is a pretty exciting month for non-fiction books. And I have seven books that I want to present for you and I want to jump into it right away. Welcome. <music> The first book on the list is called Not the End of the World, it's by Hannah Ritchie. How we can be the first generation to build a sustainable planet. An eye-opening and essential book according to Bill Gates. Um, this book will transform how you see our world's env biggest environmental problems and explain how we can solve them. It's become common to tell kids that they are gonna die from climate change. We are constantly bombarded with doomsday headlines that tell us that the soil won't be able to support crops, fish will vanish from our oceans and that we should reconsider um, having children at all. Um, I picked up this book because I tend to be uh, very uh, or radically optimistic about uh, the future of humanity, even uh, to the point that I kind of annoy certain people. So I thought. Hmm, this book looked interesting from the cover and I thought, okay, maybe this book will convince me that things are going to shit because I have not uh, <laughs> been convinced uh, so far. Uh, but apparently, as I read through the description here, I realized that this book seems to have kind of a similar look at the world as uh, I have. So what m might end up happening here is that I just feed my pre-existing beliefs. Quote, but in this bold, radically hopeful book, data scientist Hannah Ritchie argues that if we zoom out, a very different perspective emerges. In fact, the data shows that we've made so much progress on these problems that we could be on track to achieve true sustainability for the first time in human history. And it lists a bunch of things that have happened. Uh, I think like it sounds like a really good book and I, I i would be interesting to read this it reminds me a little bit about uh where is it i start to realize why people actually organize their bookshelves <laughs> when i look for books uh, as i record in my bookshelf everything is just misc uh, but it um, <laughs> reminds me of this book the rational optimist by matt riley that i read last year and i have a review of this one if you're interested it gives you a really hopeful look at the future but let's go down the list the second book on the list is The Everything Token. How NFTs and uh, Web3 uh, will transform the way we buy, sell and create. A Harvard Business School professor and a A16 said crypto researcher partner and a career marketer and a Web3 entrepreneur demystify the coming dig digital revolution. Showing how NFTs uh, will transform our online and offline interactions. And I'm no NFT bro, I don't know, I know very little bit, a little about this uh, topic, but one of the reasons that I want to uh, read up on uh, like blockchain technology is because um, I live with two digital natives, my children, and I just have a hard time seeing them accepting uh, fiat currency over uh, cryptocurrency because if you think about it it's actually it's kind of hard to explain what uh, crypto cryptocurrency is and nfts but it's also kind of hard to uh, persuade someone that fiat currency is something of valuable especially now when like the dollar is not no longer tied to anything substantial that is of value like when it was uh, tied to the gold standard I can see a future where these kids grow up and their digital lives and digital money and digital rights uh, are extremely important. And I think it's the technologists and these kids that will pave the way for the future, not us old people. The second reason that I want to look into this book is because I feel like I'm losing touch with the digital trends. Um, my kids have been playing a game called Roblox. You probably heard about it. If you haven't, you should look it up. It's a big thing. And I'm a game developer myself. And it was only like in the last couple of months that I realized how Roblox is changing the world of gaming, how uh, kids interact and 
uh, it's just a different breed of game and it will have a big mark on the future product that will be developed. And it, I felt kind of ashamed that I felt like I was behind on these trends. So that's why I try to keep up with it, reading up on new technology. And I think cryptocurrencies, NFTs, that's an area where I lack behind. So I want to read up on this. NFTs aren't just pictures on the internet or a fad that has come and gone. Rather, they're a new technology for creating digital assets and providing irrefutable proof of ownership. NFTs opens up uh, markets that have never existed before and are already revolutionizing commerce and brand building at everything from hot startups to Fortune 500 companies. So that's a book I want to check out. Next up on the list, we have China's world view. Demystifying China to prevent global conflict. This is an interesting one. It's a quite unexpected one, but bear with me. A distinguished Chinese economist offers a timely essential exploration of China's perspective on economy, government, society and its position in the world. Dr. David Daoqui Li has served as an advisor to senior, senior Chinese uh, Communist Party leaders as well as major multinational corporations and international economic institutions. Writing in response to the growing anti-Chinese uh, sentiment and alarmed by the threat of war, uh, Dr. Li pulls uh, from his wealth of first-hand experience to demystify contemporary Chinese society and advocate for understanding between China and the West. In this urgently needed and fascinating book, he explains the inner workings of a rising superpower to help the world understand how it works and how to work with it. Why is this interesting? Uh, for me, I've studied Chinese for two years on my own. Uh, I quit. I realized that <laughs> if I continued for the rest of my life, I would only reach the skill of a six year old. So be, the opportunity to cost for learning Chinese was too high for me. Um, I also work with partners uh, that are in, from China. We have external partners that might work that are Chinese or investors at the company that I work. Uh, they are Chinese. Uh, it feels like China is everywhere. And it's also I also agree with the sentiment here that uh, the perceived threat of China is something that I experience uh, in conversations, in news, in everything. So I want to understand more. I know some of China's history, but contemporary China I know very little about. I think this can be a very valuable book and I would really like to read it. In Demystifying Contemporary Chinese Society, Li helps readers reconceptualize contemporary China and it, the implications of its growth. He asserts that China's rise will be beneficial for the global order, holding out the hope that with shared understanding and mutual le learning, the Chinese and Western, system will, Western systems will eventually find a way to peacefully coexist. And that's that. So let's jump right to the next book. Well, before we do that, I would like to say that if you enjoy the content and you like these uh, monthly breakdowns, I put out also book reviews, uh, several each month when I do my reading vlog. So if you like the content on the channel, like and subscribe, that will make sure that when I publish a video, it will show up in your feed. And if you really want to support the book lab and help me build this into something fantastic, then you can uh, also donate uh, via super thanks on YouTube. Patreon or PayPal. This is, of course, uh, voluntary, but much appreciated. The next book on the list, hmm, it's uh, Fluke. Chance, Chaos and Why Everything We Do Matters. Uh, I was originally not uh, going to keep this on the list, but hey, what the heck. The reason was that I didn't think this was top shelf, top bookshelf material. And I thought that, uh, but I thought this would be a neat book to talk about since I've been thinking a lot about coincidence, luck, and also uh, determinism or the lack of free will. So I want to jump into this because it uh, feels like a book that is quite accessible, uh, especially if you compare to uh, Determined by Robert Sapolsky, which was one of, uh, which was my book of the year or in the top three, A Science of Life Without Free Will. Um, this is quite a hefty book to take on and this might be a more easier way into thinking about uh, free will, 
consequence, luck, and how little control we have over our lives. In the perspective-altering tradition of Malcolm Gladwell's The Tipping Point and um, Nassim uh, Nicholas Taleb's book The Black Swan comes a provocative challenge to how we think the world works. And why small chance events can divert our lives and change everything. This book is written by uh, social uh, scientist uh, and an Atlantic writer, Brian Klaas. This book pulls ideas from social science, chaos theory, history, evolutionary biology, uh, philosophy, and it promises uh, to provide a fresh perspective on why things happen. So this might be a good book, but if you want a <laughs> book that really will um, change your uh, thoughts and ideas about free will, then you should check out uh, Sapolsky's book. I'm doing a review for this next uh, week. Book number five, Optimal, how to sustain personal and organizational excellence every day. That was a cheesy title. But as I went into this, to the description and looked closer at this book, it actually, just, just bear with me. In his groundbreaking number one bestseller, Emotional Intelligence, Daniel Coleman revolutionized how we think about intelligence. Now, he reveals practical methods for using these inner resources to more uh, readily enter uh, an optimal state of high performance satisfaction while avoiding burnout. Uh, I heard a lot throughout the years about um, the book Emotional Intelligence. I heard good things about it, so I'm looking forward to maybe look into this follow-up book of his. And it also sounds like a more practical um, version of a book that I truly hold dear called Flow, The Psychology of Optimal Experience by Mihaly Shinsek Mihaly. This book is on my great books list uh, and it's been a while since I read it. So I think this uh, book maybe can combine the ideas of um, Shinsek Mihaly uh, with some more practical everyday uh, tips for how we can be in more flow states. In Optimal, Daniel Coleman and Gary Shernis uh, reveals how emotional intelligence can help us have a great day, any day. They explain how to set a realistic, attainable goal of feeling satisfied that you have had a productive day to consistently work at your optimal level Based on research uh, of how hundreds of people build their inner, inner architecture of having a good day, they sketch what an optimal state feels like and show how emotional intelligence holds the key to our best performance. This sounds like a, just a really good self-help book. But wait, there is more. Uh, the algorithm. Uh, how AI decides who gets uh, hired, monitored, promoted, and fired, and why we need to fight back now. This book is by Hilke Schnellmann. Um, okay, Hilke Schnellmann is an Emmy Award winning investiga investigative reporter, Wall Street Journal, and Guardian contributor and journalism professor at NYU. In the algorithm, she investigates the rise of artificial intelligence in the world of work. AI is now being used to decide who has access to an education, who gets hired, who gets fired, and who receives a promotion. Drawing on exclusive inf information from whistleblowers, uh, internal documents, and real-world tests, Schnellmann uh, discovers that many of the algorithms making high-stakes decisions are biased, racist, or do even more harm than good. Algorithms are at the brink of dominating our lives and threaten our human future uh, if we don't fight back. So it's quite a tech-heavy month this month, uh, but since I think uh, technology uh, will have and have a big impact on human behavior, I think it has a place on this channel. I can't say I'm really sold on this description. It uh, sounds a bit alarmist, but I also might be clueless to what's going on. Uh, and I would love to know more. I have an aversion to books uh, written by journalists. I prefer scientists because of uh, yeah, the tone in uh, books that are written by journalists are often more political, more opinionated, more one-sided uh, in my experience. and. Um, 
that's why I'm a little bit concerned about this one. But I also like to get my uh, ideas challenged. So this might be a good opportunity for that. And the topic sounds highly interesting to me. And you know I'm all about AI. Uh, I actually want to pitch in and just to say that this was my favorite book on technology from last year, The Coming Wave by Mustafa Solomon. It's about uh, synthetic biology and AI, and this guy knows what he's talking about. So if you want a book on that, then check this one out. I have a review of the, this book in the description below. Last book on the list, it's out on uh, January 16th. Uh, it's called Open Talent, Leveraging the Global Workforce uh, to sol Solve your biggest challenges. This one is written by John Windsor. With sparsely populated offices and people working from wherever they are and with AI emerging uh, everywhere in business and dominating headlines, our work lives have undergone a remarkable transformation seemingly overnight. But the reality is that for years, the ever-growing digital wave has been uh, breaking down organizational boundaries and increasing the adaptation of open innovation, including the use of crowdsourcing platforms and as uh, talent solutions. Now the imperative is clear. Adapt to and leverage this new digitally enabled world of open talent or get left behind. To me, the transformations of how work works and the new interconnected global economy is just fascinating because it will have implications on how we work, how we live our lives and uh, something that I want to read up on and kind of I would like to be able to see the trends, the trends here because something is going to happen. Things have changed a lot since the pandemic and uh, it's going to have implications for um, how we behave, uh, how we live our lives, where we live, and uh, it will probably have much more consequences than that. This might be the most niche book on the list this week, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Um, it's probably not for everyone, but uh, this, was, this was a book that stood out to me because uh, of the topic, and I haven't seen a book like this before. So that's it for the list, uh, quite a few books actually. And I would love to hear in the comments which one of these books you would pick up. Uh, and as is tradition by now, I will pick one book. Actually, I will pick two books, uh, uh, like the top most anticipated books for me from this list. And I have to say it's uh, uh, China's Worldview. Uh, I just want to read up on that. It's probably dry as hell, but uh, yeah. Uh, I felt like I wanted to know more. It would be a challenging read for me as well. And the second one is The Everything Token. Uh, it just resonated with me. So those two books are uh, books that I want to check out. Next up on the channel will be The Determined Review. Uh, I have a vlog coming out as well. I'm reading um, Think Again by Adam Grant for the book club. So I'll probably put a review up of that very soon so a lot of cool stuff is coming so stay tuned subscribe and like and have a great great week and enjoy your reading and see you soon Bjorn out